it began to be from the ones that were working the least amount of hours were the first to get paid. And so those who had worked but two hours, they got a full day's pay. Maybe it was $50, who knows? So he handed them $50, and those that were standing around, they thought, now we've been here for 10 hours, and they got $50 for working two hours. Let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten. That should be, we'll get probably $250. Well, that makes sense. They worked two hours and got $50, and, and these people had worked five times as long, done five times as much, and so they came in with smiles on their face, and they got $50. They said, wait, hey, this ain't going to work at all. We're not leaving here with this kind of thing. No, where's a union steward? Get somebody here. And they said, well, what's wrong? And they said, you see those people over there? He gave them $50 for working two hours. We worked all day, and he's going to give us the same stuff. Nobody's going to walk all over me. No, that's reasonable. You stop and you think about it, that's reasonable. They work five times as much. They should get five times as much. That's in man's thinking, but it's not God's thinking. And you see, what does God say? God says, I agreed with you for a day's wage. You give it a day's work, and $50 is what I give. I give you $50. If I want to give them a full day if that's in my heart and I want to give them a full day's pay though they work two hours it's my money I can give it out to anybody I please that's under my control oh yeah I guess that makes sense but you see it's a different of reasoning and a lot of times the devil comes into our minds and builds a case for that which is going to destroy us the devil works in our minds and builds a situation that sounds reasonable, but it's not what God is saying. And here is a man who gets cheated out of everything. Why? Because he's got his thoughts instead of God's thoughts. First Corinthians tells us, let us all speak the same thing. Let us come into the same mind. Let's understand according to the same truth. Let us come together. Because if we don't, we can have things that are reasonable, but it's going to bring us into bondage. It's going to bring us into captivity. We need to learn from God. God is our teacher. And if we don't let God teach us, we can have something that seems to be acceptable in our mind, but it isn't what God is saying. Now we look and we find this man. He believes that he's been cheated. But God answers him in verse 26 and says unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou wicked and slothful servant. What's wrong with this man? Number one, there's sin in his life. Whenever we're in the middle of living, we have to know that my need is to be right with God. Every single one of you here, myself included, we have to know that it's not what other people are doing. It's not the preacher, not the deacon, but it's me, Lord. I'm standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, God. I'm standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother, not my father, but it's me, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the church down the street, not the hypocrites. No, it's me, God. I'm the person that's standing in the need of prayer. The song says, it's me, Lord, it's me standing in the need of prayer. And when we come into that understanding that when we begin to reach out toward others with accusation and feelings of depression, we're missing the mark and we're trying to escape from the fact, I've got a problem. And it matters not whether the preacher is honest or not. If your marriage is going to hell, that's where you ought to be praying. Don't get involved with counting preachers that are phony. Don't get involved with counting hypocrites. But look and see where your problem is. You are not responsible for others. You're responsible for yourself. Now, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be concerned about ministry. We want to see it to be valid. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that there are people who are missing the mark, shipwrecked and bankrupt morally, spiritually, and mentally, who have missed the mark so terribly, and yet they haven't begun to understand that while they're out judging other people, their whole life needs the mercy of God. I've had people to judge me at times. Very seldom have I found deep men of God to judge me. Very seldom have I found Christians who really know God deeply, but I find somebody whose house is about ready to break in two, a man who can't keep his life together at all, a man who's not serving God 
and he's the one who's telling me what's wrong with me. Supposed thoughts that he has that I'm not doing something right, and he's the one who comes, you know, and he's about ready to fall apart morally, mentally, spiritually, everything else. The people who've combed me the most through a fine-tooth comb are people who ought to cry out, God, be merciful to me. The devil's about ready to destroy me. My life is a life that's filled with problems and sin. But no, it's people like that who sometimes you stand amazed and you think, you know, why are you attacking me? You know, I haven't hurt you. I haven't talked about you. I haven't criticized you. I haven't judged you. I haven't done anything to you. I haven't in any way marred you. I haven't been against you one bit. Why do you stand defying me when you've got your hands full? It's your life. You're living in outward sin, and you suppose that there might be something wrong with me. You know, what you need to do is recognize I've got to get right with God because the devil's ready to destroy me. My problem's inside of my own life we have to see this he said that his Lord he said you're a hard man I knew verse 24 that thou art an hard man reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed the devil wants to plant in your heart and in your mind questions concerning God, God's people, and the church. The devil wants to bring you to the place where you feel that everything is devious, that nothing is worth respecting, that everything is wrong. And the further that you get away from God, the more this thing begins to multiply in your thinking. He was convinced that there was nothing really good about his master, that he was a slave to his master instead of recognizing that the master intended to bless him. And then the answer goes in verse 26, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou wicked and slothful servant, you're wicked, your thoughts are thoughts against people. You have no love for your brethren. You have no love for the people you work with. You have no love for the people that are alongside of you. You're afraid that somebody gets your blessing. Your heart is wicked. You don't like others. You've got a wicked heart, thou wicked and slothful servant. In the midst of your wickedness, you find that you are lazy. The problem that you have is that you don't pay the price. We have to understand why people don't make it. And the reason that people don't make it is because of wickedness and slothfulness. It's not that people don't like you. I hear people say, well, you know, there's a clique in the church. There's always a clique, and most of the clique is people that are willing to serve. That's the biggest clique. You know, it's the easiest thing to get inside. You want a witness? Go right ahead. See Alan. You want to work on the phones? Just come ahead. Be here at night. There's a place to get here. You want to be with those in ministry? My, we got a lot of time we can spend together, you know. But people say there's a click and what the devil does he changes the thinking until it's very reasonable in the mind of the people there is no click in this church that you can't get into but it's not always fun it's not always you know joy there's times when it's sacrifice there's times when it's difficult there's time when it's not much a, a, a delight but the devil likes to build it you know there's a click in the church and what's wrong people won't pay the price you can go as far as God will let you go. And God's not going to hold back anybody that wants to serve. And I'm not saying this as a, you know, a argument or chastening. I'm teaching today that the devil wants to put the wrong thoughts in your mind. And if not yours, he'll bring it into the mind of somebody else coming to you. They don't show love toward people. They don't care about this or that or something else. What is the devil doing? He's corrupting your thoughts. And the people that are the people that do this are people that have got inner problems in their life. How many times do you find a disappointed person who's filled with the Holy Ghost, getting a hold of God, praying and serving the Lord? They're too busy to get into little things like that. But it's the person who feels hurt. The person who feels really hurt inside, they begin to find something that they resent. And I've seen times I've preached a message and I wasn't preaching at nobody, but just preaching God's word. 
Do you think somebody would come up to you and say, Pastor, you really preached the message and it hurt me? You know, some people honest will, but not the person who gets hurt whose heart's not right. They'll wait and they'll find something that they can say that's legitimate. They'll go ahead and they'll find something and they'll just say, I don't think there's enough love here. Or I don't think things are handled right here. Or I don't think there's enough compassion. What are they saying? They're saying, I'm hurt and I've got to find a way to cover it. But God gets to the center of things. He wants to touch the center part of us. This man was believing that the problem was his boss. This man was believing the problem was his brothers around about him. This, this man believed the problem was that nobody treated him right. But the real problem was that he was wicked and he was lazy. And I tell you, those two things will destroy anybody. Life demands sacrifice. You're not going to go anywhere except you're willing to sacrifice. God wants to build every single one of us. He sets this nation before us an open door that no man can shut. But there is nothing that's handed to us that's easy. God makes it possible and we have to make the sacrifice. Education takes a sacrifice. Improvement in employment takes a sacrifice. Ministry and going forward in God takes a sacrifice. We'd like to believe that the boss is our problem. We'd like to believe that our wife is our problem. We'd like to believe that somebody else is our problem. But it's not true if I'm going to have victory I recognize that God is for me and if God be for me who can be against me the devil can't hold me back people can't hold me back God is able to bless there's a lot of people who believe that things are against me and they say because things are against me I can't make it the boss doesn't like me and I can't make it I can't make it because of something else. This man said, I can't make it because my master is a hard man and he gets out of people what he should not get. But God speaks and says, no, your problem is inside of yourself. What is keeping you from being blessed? The master said, it's because you are wicked. What's keeping you from being blessed? The problem is that you are lazy. Well, why was he lazy? Basically, his sins in his mind kept him from motivation. Motivation has to come out of faith. There has to be faith to be motivated. There has to be faith that it's going to pay off. There has to be faith that I can put my trust in God. There has to be faith that I can put my trust in the universe. There has to be faith I can put my trust in God's men. There has to be faith I can put my trust in the church of the living God. We have to have faith that we can't be motivated. God motivates us with the confidence that greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world and that God is true to his word, that his word will not return void. And God says, if we will do that which is pleasing in his sight, we shall be rewarded. The man with five talents knew that he was going to be blessed. He knew he would be blessed if only he proved that he could do it. So many people are afraid if the blessing doesn't come in the way that they feel prescribed that they're losing out. If you work for somebody else and even if they get all the reward, there is no way they can get all the reward because you've learned